Former FBI Director James Comey is defending the investigation into connections between Russia and President Trump's 2016 election campaign. He appeared virtually before the Senate Judiciary Committee on Wednesday. Comey testified that the probe was done by the book and was appropriate. He oversaw what was known as Crossfire Hurricane until he was abruptly fired by President Trump in 2017. Some Republicans criticized the FBI for launching the investigation. This committee is looking into whether it was politically motivated. For more on all of this now, we are joined by Catherine Herridge. She is our senior investigative correspondent. Catherine, what was the main focus of GOP senators during this hearing? Well, Lana, we've had these recently declassified records that have shed new light on the FBI's handling of the Russia case called Crossfire Hurricane. And to put it in the simplest terms, the intelligence the FBI had had a number of flaws in it. So essentially, the system was blinking red in late 2016 and into 2017 about the basis of their investigation. And what we know now is that there were at least two warnings to, from the CIA to the FBI about this Trump campaign aide, Carter Page, that Carter Page was someone who had supported CIA operations by providing information, and this went some way to explaining his Russia contacts. So the system is blinking red, and the FBI blew through the stop signs. Um, Democrats say that this investigation of the investigators um, is trotting a lot of old ground. They say the investigation was justified to look into allegations that the Trump campaign had coordinated in some way with Russia. But with all due respect to what the former director testified to today, that it was by the book, there was such intense sloppiness about the handling of these surveillance warrants and elements of the campaign, there's no higher bar than to investigate a political campaign, that it's now the focus of a separate outside investigation that may have criminal consequences for some of the individuals involved. Well, Catherine, as you're discussing those surveillance applications to track Carter Page, the former uh, Trump campaign aide, um, what was the what was the former FBI director's response to those right. critiques? Well, the former FBI director testified today that if he knew then what he knows today about the errors and omissions in these surveillance warrants applications and underlying credibility, credibility issues with something called the Steele dossier. This was opposition research that was paid for by Democrats that was used to secure these surveillance warrants. He said he wouldn't have signed these FISA applications. Based on my memory, I believe he signed two of the four. And his testimony today, Lana, is consistent with what we've heard from other former Justice Department officials who also signed these surveillance warrants. And again, everyone says there were terrible mistakes, but no one has been held accountable. And again, that comes back to the Durham investigation, because if you knowingly withhold information from the FISA court, this surveillance court, or you knowingly mislead that court, that in itself is a criminal offense. Well, in a letter to Senator Lindsey mm -hmm. Graham, who chairs the Judiciary Committee, National Intelligence mm -hmm. Director John Radcliffe said that he had declassified information about the 2016 right. election, mm -hmm. even though he did not know if it was true. Right. How do we see that come into play during Comey's testimony? Well, first of all, Democrats uh, objected uh, that this information had been made available to the committees. It, they say it's old information. They say it's information that has already been debunked or discredited by the Senate Intelligence Committee. Now, that's not the position that Republicans are taking. The position they argued today is put aside whether it was credible or not. The question is, did the FBI investigate it with the same intensity and the same resources that they threw up against these allegations with the Trump campaign? And the former FBI director testified today that he could not, in fact, remember getting an investigative referral from the CIA about this intelligence involving the Clinton campaign and allegations that they were trying to tie Donald Trump to Russian election interference to distract people from the scandal over her email server. So just like pause and think about that for a minute. The FBI director 
and a senior agent at the FBI, Peter Strzok, get an investigative referral from the CIA. The CIA says, you FBI have to look into this. It's of some significance. And he testified today that he simply can't remember whether that happened or not. And Senator Graham, who is leading the committee, said, well, the paperwork indicates that it went to you. And that's where, that's where it ended today. Catherine, what a mess. I mean, between just the, 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 yeah. uh, the mm -hmm. admissions that, it was, that mistakes were made, that it was sloppy, mm -hmm. that, the, that the handling of it was so poorly done, um, regardless of political party, it doesn't lend a lot of confidence in mm -hmm. the system, particularly heading into what looks like it's going to be another contentious campaign. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I'm wondering, after watching this testimony, do our viewers, should our viewers, should the American people have greater confidence in the system that, that these guys actually learned from the last go round and that things will, in fact, be better mm -hmm. moving forward? Well, you raise an excellent point, Lana, because after 9-11, these extraordinary powers were created so that the FBI could investigate what they believed domestic terrorist cells driven by al-Qaeda in this country. They were trying to stop another 9-11 inside the United States. And there really is no more an awesome power for the FBI and the Justice Department to gather intelligence on American citizens inside this country. And one of the lessons of 2016 is that this toolbox, one of the most important surveillance toolboxes that law enforcement can have, was riddled with errors and omissions. And the FISA court, the surveillance court itself has said, all four warrants were defective. And that is no small thing. So to answer your question, we don't really have accountability on this issue yet. And what everyone is waiting to see is what John Durham, the U.S. attorney in Connecticut, is going to find. Is he going to find that there were a lot of mistakes, there may have even been an abuse of the system, but it doesn't cross that high threshold to criminal activity? All right, Catherine Herridge, thank you. You're welcome.